Again, and welcome to your program, Shalom Shalom, with your host, Dr. Marisol Pelser, and my beloved husband, Reverend Dexter Pelser. Amen. Amen. Be what a blessing. Amen. Today's program is empowering because today's program is about ruling and reigning with Christ. Yes, we will rule and reign with Christ. But what does that entail? What does the scripture say? What is my role? How do I rule? How do I reign with Christ? What is that all about? Amen? Amen. So before we start, I'm going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that we're more than conquerors to Christ Jesus. And thank you, Lord, that we will rule and reign with Christ. And I just thank you for all the blessings and I Amen. welcome the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Amen. and I surrender what we say yes. to the will of the Father the Son and the Holy Ghost Amen. and Father we just give you all the praise all the honor and all the glory and we thank you that you will manifest yourself in this program and Thank you for teaching us about ruling and reigning with Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So how do we rule and reign with Christ? Amen. Well, we love you, brothers and sisters, and welcome. You know, this is, uh, there's so many awesome blessings of walking with the Lord all the days of our life. And one of those is that based on what we do on this earth, we will rule and reign with Christ in accordance with our works that we do on this earth. So it's important that we establish this in the Word. So I want to jump right into the Word so we understand that we're not just on this earth to get saved and then get to go to heaven. We're actually on this earth to establish the kingdom while we're here on this earth and then to rule and reign with Christ during the millennium and into eternity. And this is really important in our position of how we rule and reign. The Lord actually talks to us about is based on how we serve Him while we're here on this earth. So... In light of that, let's look at what the scriptures say. Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. We can't start this without establishing that we're going to rule and reign with Christ. And Christ is the whole focus of all this. This is all about what Christ has accomplished through the cross. And, and how the Father will give all authority and has given all authority to the Son to rule and reign. And to judge all to the Son because of his obedience, even unto death on the cross. So let's see the kingdom that the Father gives to the Son to rule over and reign over with us, his children. Let's see this in the Word. So, and this is good news. Um, Isaiah 9, 6. You can't start this without starting in the beginning of the prophetic word about Christ. It says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder. Of course, this is Jesus. And his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Yes, this is Jesus. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David, we know that through Joseph, the lineage that came through David, through Joseph, and then to Christ, upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice. From that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So first of all, it's very clear, and we'll see this in more scriptures, that the Father is giving all authority that every knee must bow to Jesus Christ, and he will be the one who rules and reigns on this earth during the millennium and beyond. The Father has given this authority to his Son. So let's see this even in another scripture, which is Daniel 7, 13 and 14. These are two of my favorite prophetic scriptures <clears throat> about how Jesus is going to rule and reign. <clears throat> I love this. This is a vision, of course, Daniel's having. And he says, I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, which is, Jesus calls himself the Son of Man through Marth, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So we know that that's his name, the Son of Man. Coming with the clouds of heaven. <laughs> Sounds like the rapture. 
He came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him, him being the Son of Man, was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, all nations, and languages should serve him, Christ. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. And his kingdom is the one which shall not be destroyed. This is so important. We understand this right after. And this is speaking of the vision of last days. And if you go through Daniel, you go through Zechariah, all that, it talks about the last days, the battle of Armageddon, and then all of this being established. So this is what the good news is. That not only are we saved, but we're going to be in a kingdom that is everlasting under Jesus Christ. Now, let's turn to um, the New Testament now, Hebrews 2, 8 through 10. Let's see all this confirmed in the New Testament about the kingdom being given to Jesus. And then, don't worry, we're getting to it, how we rule and reign with him. But first, we want to establish the whole reason this is all about Christ, not about us. Hebrews 2, 8 through 10. This is, of course, the word of the Lord, and it says, You, being the Father, have put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we do not yet see all things put under Christ, under him. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting for him, of course Christ, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he who sacrifices, sanctifies, and those who are being sanctified are all of one, for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. So, we see here that the Father has put all things in subjection under Jesus' feet. But there's an important note in that. It says, but now we do not yet see all things put under him. Look around you. Are all things put under the subjection of Jesus? No, because the prince of the power of the air still has authority over his children in this world to do evil. And there are still the consequences of the Adamic sin and Adam and Eve sinning against God that it still brings all that sin and trouble and suffering on this earth. We have not seen all things yet put under subjection under Jesus. Huh, but we will. So, it's important that we know that. Now, <clears throat> let's get, start to look at how we're going to rule and reign with Christ and when. When will all things be put in subjection under Jesus' feet? The scriptures tell us. So let's go to 2 Timothy 2.12 first. <laughs> I'm going to actually start in verse 11. This is a faithful saying. For if we died with him, capital H being Christ, we shall also live with him. If we endure, that means keep faithful to the end, run the race to the end of our lives. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. So there it is. If we endure till the end, we will also reign with Christ. First scripture that tells us that. Now, I love the book of Revelation because the letters to the seven churches all talk about rewards of heaven if we overcome and are faithful to the end, if we endure with them how we're going to rule and reign with them, how we're going to get a robe of white, how we're going to have a, a stone with our, his name written on it for each one of us, all these beautiful gifts and rewards of walking with Christ all the days of our life, if we over, overcome and endure with him. That's why I love the seven letters. They all end with beautiful gifts and promises and rewards. So I want to turn to one of them, which is Revelation 2.26. You really ought to read these seven letters because everyone that believes and follows them should get these rewards. 2.26. I love this. This is to <laughs> the church in Thyatira. And he writes, 
He who overcomes and keeps my works until the end. Oh, Lord, we, we can't ever forget this. This is not a short race. This is not accept Jesus Christ and go back to the world. This is we keep his works till the end. We are faithful and true to the end. We're not a dog re that returns to the vomit of the world in our sinful past. We actually have victory over that, and we walk in obedience, led by the Spirit, following Jesus Christ all the days of our life, loving him, adoring him, and bringing the light of the gospel to others. He says, he who keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. He's talking to us. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. They shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessel. As I, was awful, as I also have received from my Father, this is Jesus speaking, in red. And I will give him the morning star. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches of all time. This is a word to us. He who overcomes and keeps my works until the end. To him I will give power over the nations. Ah, well that sounds like ruling and reign with them, doesn't it, Marisol? Mm -hmm. The same as we just read in 2 Timothy 2.12. Ah, so now I'm starting to understand. And Jesus is going to rule and reign with an iron fist. Ah, I'm starting to understand. Well, when is this, Marisol? In the millennium? Yes. So, so glory be to God. Let's look at that. <clears throat> Revelation 26. This all makes so much sense when we just follow the word through. And, and Dexter, it says that, that he will give us the morning star. And so that he will give us a relationship with Jesus that is deeper, more healing, more restoration. The whole fullness. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it's going to be so awesome, Marisol. So awesome. As we rule and reign with Christ. <clears throat> Revelation 26. This is so important. This is the thousand-year reign of Christ. And a lot of people are like, well, why, why on earth does the battle of Armageddon happen? Jesus destroys Satan, locks him up in hell with chains for a thousand years, and then we're going to rule and reign with Christ over this earth, all the tr over all the tribes of the earth for that thousand years. We will rule and reign with them. Why, why is that period... Well, the Father tells us to put all things in subjection under Christ and to prepare for eternity. And therefore, at the end of the thousand-year reign, we know what happens. Satan is loosed. We know this because it's right after Revelation 26, starting in Revelation 27. Satan is loosed. He gathers all the nations to come against Jerusalem, and then God destroys them. And then the white throne judgment and... People that don't believe in Christ are cast into hell, who are, whose names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And then we're going to live and reign with Christ forever. What chapter, honey? So it's Revelation 26. So the thousand-year reign is when Christ will actually be on this earth with his throne in Jerusalem, and we will be with them, ruling and reigning with them for a thousand years. How do we know this? Listen to the word. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. By the way, what chapter? That's Revelation 26. But what, that's the verse, but what chapter? Revelation 26. 26 what? 20 verse 6. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, Revelation 20 verse 6. Okay. Now, <clears throat> blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. We're all going to, glory be to God, we know this in First and Second Thessalonians, that at the end, there's going to be a rapture, and Christ is going to take the, the dead first, they're going to rise up into the heavens with the shout of the trump, Christ, and all be joined with Christ, and then those who are living also. And in the rapture, we're all going to then be transformed and with a new resurrection body that will never be destroyed. That's the first resurrection. We know that. Because Paul talks about a lot in Corinthians and then in Thessalonians, how we'll have a new body, a new resurrection body. This old body, from dust it came and to dust it will return. But we'll have a new glorious body forever. And he says, Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power. The second death is a great white throne judgment where people are cast into hell. Well, glory, hallelujah. None of us want to go through that. That's actually Revelation 20, right around verse 12 and 13. But they shall be priests of God 
and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Ah, now three times in a row we're seeing that we're going to rule and reign with Christ. And we're going to see during a millennium where there are still unbelievers on the earth, we will have authority over the nations, over cities, over whatever, depending on how we serve the Lord during our life. Now, let me show you glimpses of that in the Word. <clears throat> but first, let me show you Revelation 22, 12. This is the end. And I love this. This is the end of the Bible. Revelation chapter 22, the last chapter of the Bible. Christ is talking about he's coming, he's coming back quickly. And he says something very important in Revelation 22, verse 12. He says, Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. This is in red, so it's Christ himself speaking. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. To the city, what city? Ah, I thought you'd ask. Jerusalem. New Jerusalem, Revelation 21. <coughs> so, <clears throat> Jesus Christ is coming. He's going to come in the clouds, we know that. With the shout of a trump, we'll all be joined up to him in the rapture. And glory be to God, his reward is with him. Based on our works. Hmm. So what do you think that means, Marisol? Based on what we've done here, have we served them? Yeah. Now, so if you serve them a little, do you think your reward will be less? Versus if you serve them faithfully a lot, do you think your reward will be more? Your reward will be in proportion to your, how you serve them. Right. And how do we know that? Well, because Jesus told the parable of the talents. Right. Specifically for this. So I want to turn to that. Because there's a purpose in everything the Lord tells us in the Word. And by the way, he says in Hebrews, if you don't believe that he rewards you, you've got a serious problem. You're not pleasing to the Lord, he says, if you don't believe that he's rewarding his servants. A lot of people forget that. That's actually in Hebrews. 13.2. <clears throat> it's Hebrews 11.6. The Lord just planted that in me to go to it and thank the Lord. He reminded me of the verse. Hebrews 11.6. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must... Believe that he is, he is what? He is God. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. See, we must, the reason why Jesus te teaches about rewards and Paul teaches about rewards a lot is because we must believe it. And that's part of our faith. We must believe that as we serve him here on this earth, we have eternal rewards in heaven. Oh, my Lord, there's so many parables and things that Jesus taught about that. We know the one where he says, when you get to heaven, everything you did, all your works on earth will be tested by fire. And he says, the sticks, the, the wood, the, all that, the hay, the straw, it will be burned up. You'll get zero rewards. Those are things that you do in your own strength. But the diamonds, the precious metals, things you did through faith, remember, without faith, it's impossible to please God, through faith, through Christ, you will receive eternal rewards, diamonds, emeralds, gems. Those will not be burned away, and you'll get your eternal rewards for those. This is the word of the Lord. So, now, Luke 19. <clears throat> this is a parable of the talents. <clears throat> and I'm going to start in verse 12. Therefore, this is Jesus speaking, Jesus said, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. So he called ten of his servants, delivered to them ten minas, and said to them, Do business till I come. Remember, Jesus came, died on the cross, and went and went back to the Father. But he said, I will return again the same way from whence I went, the same way I will return in the clouds. But his citizens hated him 
and sent a delegation after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. And so it was that when he returned, having received the kingdom, he then commanded these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first saying, Master, your mina has earned 10 minas. Oh, wow. So the gifts and callings, which are represented by the talents or the minas, because in Matthew it's the talents. He got one and he, he had, remember, it says the seed that falls in the good soil will bear a hundredfold fruit. Ten minas. So, the Lord says to him, well done, good servant, because you were faithful and very little have authority over ten cities. Oh, why would Jesus tell us that if we're going to rule and reign with them in the millennium, and there's going to be cities and nations during that time, we already know that, and he's going to place us in charge of those cities and nations. Oh, so that's how we're going to rule and reign with him. Likewise, a second came saying, Master, your mina has earned five minas. Likewise, he said to him, you also be over five cities. So with the one mina, he was faithful and returned five. So he is in charge of five cities. So it's commensurate with the level of what you do. Then another came saying, Master, here is your mina, which I have put away in a handkerchief. And again, Matthew, it's called talents. And in Matthew, he buried it. He hid it. Because he was fearful of the master. And he says, For I feared you because you are an austere man. You collect what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. And the master said to him, Out of your own mouth I will judge you, you wicked servant. You knew that I was an austere man, collecting what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put your money in the bank, that at my coming I might have collected with interest? And he said to those who stood by, take the mina from him and give it to him who has ten. Ah, so he's going to even rule and reign now over eleven cities. But they said to him, Master, he has ten minas. For, for I say to you, that to everyone who has will be given. And from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Bring him here, those enemies of mine, who did not want to, me to reign over them and slay them before me. Well, they get cast into hell. So if we take the gifts and talents that the Lord gave us and we bury them and we don't use them, well, hmm, there's two levels. First of all, when the fire comes to test our works, there's not going to be much there left. Diamonds, gems, precious things for rewards in heaven. And second, if we didn't want Christ to reign over us on earth, why would we want him to reign over us in heaven? In other words, he needs to be our Savior and our Lord. And you're cast into hell. Read the version in Matthew. He cast them into the outer darkness in hell. This is really important that we get this. We're on this earth to bring glory to Jesus Christ. We're on this earth to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow him. By the power of the resurrection, led by the Holy Spirit, to live a life that's pleasing to him. And to believe that as we do that, we will receive rewards as we put in faith in him. And those rewards will be commensurate with how we're rewarded in heaven during the millennium and how, is, how we will rule and reign with him. We need to make sure we understand that so that with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, we follow him and love him. This is important. And glory be to God. This is good news because he rewards us for our faithfulness in following him. Remember, overcomer follows him faithfully to the end. We never stop. We run the race to finish the race. So I want to just pray and release this. So Father, <clears throat> we understand that you, re you, you are coming yes. quickly yes. and your reward is with you to give yes. to us as we have served you with those talents and gifts all the days of our life. So Father, we repent of not serving you fully and not multiplying those gifts and talents for the kingdom of God. So we ask you, Father, right now, no matter what you have to do in our lives, transform us, discipline us, sanctify us, do whatever is necessary. Lord, because we just confess and we give all of our life to you. Our, all of our soul, all our mind, all of our strength, we choose to love you and follow you, Jesus. We hold nothing back from you. Now we ask you, Holy Spirit, to lead us to bear fruit for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. We give our life afresh and anew to you, Lord. We ask you to lead us in the way everlasting to bring you glory, honor, and praise uh, during our time on this earth. We ask for the measure of faith to believe, to follow you all the days of our life, even through trials and tribulations, Lord. 
We give you our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What a blessing, Dexter. Thank you. <clears throat> so remember, be faithful and fruitful. Amen. Lots of fruit for the kingdom. Lots of glory for the Lord. Amen. This has been your program, Shalom, Shalom, with your host, Reverend Dexter Pelzer and myself, Dr. Marisol Amen. Pelzer. Amen. God bless you and see you next week. Shalom. Amen. Amen.